So for this next session, um, the session number five of our conference and on day two is about new international partnerships. It will be led by our moderator, Dr. Hassan Baloui, uh, who is a mathematician and leading the studies and advanced technique and partnerships here at UM6P. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, Dr. Hassa, a round of applause, please. We can do better. Very good, thank you so much. Thank you for this nice introduction. So uh, to start the session about international partnerships, I gladly will call our panelists, uh, those who are in online and uh, those who are present physically with us. Uh, our panelists today uh, are Professor Yang Feng from uh, Chinese Academic of Science, uh, Dr. Mathieu Guerin uh, from University Corporation uh, uh, Professional Training of French Embassy in Kenya. I believe they are on, on, online and uh, also uh, Mr. Daisuki, uh, Daisuki Mizuguchi, uh, sorry for the pronunciations. Uh, if you can join us, please here. And uh, Professor Rosanna Valera, I suppose she is online also. Uh, from uh, and Professor Jerome Chanel, Mr. Jerome Chanel is online, maybe. And uh, Anis Burkadis, if you want to join us here. So uh, this session is about. Uh, please join us. You're welcome. Nice to meet you. Orsana, sorry, Orsana. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, before introducing uh, properly uh, each speaker, uh, I just want to say a few words about uh, partnerships and uh, what we are trying to address in this session. Um, I mean, um, every university is doing its own uh, partnership, but uh, this occasion is, is, uh, is for us to identify and share uh, experiences, what are the best practices for us, for all of us that we can share to promote research, to promote student exchange, to promote um, advancing and solving African problems. Uh, one, uh, one other issue is what should be uh, all the modalities for establishing all those partnerships uh, to, to widen a little bit more uh, our innovation system within our uh, universities. And uh, finally, how RCF uh, can design and unleash a uh, multiplier effect to increase this partnership. And uh, I will finally uh, set one other question that I will add to, to the panelists is uh, as partnerships, uh, it cannot be done alone, as research cannot be done alone. We almost need three-way partnerships or at least two. Three-way partnerships uh, is private sector, state sector, and research institutions. So uh, this is one of the things that uh, I will, uh, I, will, I will say we have a saying in Morocco which says the one hand cannot upload. We need more than one hand to, to, to do the research. So uh, we, we, I have taken enough time. Let me introduce uh, Professor, uh, Professor Wong Yenfeng online. Uh, she, is, uh, she, is a, she is a professor at the Chinese Science Academy. She, uh, she received her PhD degree in ecology from uh, from the Institute of, uh, of Botany uh, and Chinese Academy of Science in 2001. Uh, Professor Yen Fin focuses on the mechanism of soil carbon stability uh, under, global, uh, under global changes. She investigates bio, bio geochemical processes of soil carbon and nitrogen. And without uh, taking more time, Professor, the floor is yours. I believe she. Okay, so I've been told that Professor Wong is not connected yet, uh, and I can see that uh, uh, Dr. Mathieu Guerin 
uh, attaché for scientific and uni university cooperation professional training at the French Embassy in Kenya is online. Uh, he was the second in the list. Let me just pull up his bio uh, so I can properly introduce him. Uh, Monsieur Mathieu Guerin is uh, an associate professor in history, a maître de conférence habilité à diriger la recherche at uh, at the Institute National de, uh, at Institute National des Langues et Civilisations Orientales, second to the French Ministry of, uh, of Europe and Foreign Affairs. He has been posted in Malaysia and Kenya and attaché for science and higher education. So the floor is yours, Dr. Guérin. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour, um, uh, good afternoon. I think this afternoon now in, uh, in Morocco, Maraba. Um, so um, thank you very much for the recent facet for giving me this, uh, this opportunity uh, to speak about partnerships in uh, higher education and research and how um, PhD candidates can be involved in, uh, in those partnerships. Um, um, Professor Baloui, you, you spoke about uh, the need to address uh, African problems um, I think we can even go further now and, uh, and see African uh, scientists and uh, PhD candidates uh, tackle with um, uh, global uh, problems from that are uh, of concern, not only for Africa, but for the entire world. Um, so uh, as for uh, how in France we do understand these uh, links, uh, these partnership links, uh, and how we try to, to bring a PhD candidates um, within those partnerships. Um, so, so maybe I, I should start uh, by uh, introducing how the PhD in France works so that um, the recipient uh, members can fully understand uh, how uh, it leads to partnerships. The, um, the, so, in France, PhD uh, candidates can be stu are students in the universities, but many of them, especially in what we, could, we can call the hard sciences, uh, are also employed by the universities. They get a doctoral contract, so they enter into a research unit as a member of the unit. They get a salary, they... they um, they are part of a team and they will be working not only on their specific topic, but their topic will be within a, a, a wider range of uh, scientific questions uh, that is addressed by all the team. So, and you, so you are mentioning between the state uh, operators and the education. So this is how it starts. Um, uh, especially knowing that in France, um, most of the research, research teams are not only university-based, they in also include uh, research uh, partners like IADIA. I know that uh, uh, Madame Verdier uh, was uh, um, part of a panel yesterday, but also the CNRS, the French uh, Scientific Center for, um, National Center for Scientific Research, so um, any um, PhD students who enter uh, um, um, a research unit will have to deal both uh, with the university and with the research institution, knowing that also many of those uh, research teams have links with the private sector and the research can be then uh, channeled uh, to answer questions that are asked by the um, by the private partners. Um, and even the, in that case, the student can get the salary not from the university, but from the private partner. So we have a, a system that is quite uh, holistic that allows PhD candidates um, not only to focus on their own research, but also to link with research institution, the university and the private sector. Um, one of the so and when we welcome um, African uh, PhD students and we are very happy to do so, um, they will be part of a very large group of uh, foreign uh, PhD candidates in France. It's 
uh, over 40% um, of PhD candidates in France are uh, foreign nationals. So many come from, um, from Europe, but many also do come from Africa. Um, and then they would be working together between themselves, so creating networks uh, amongst PhD candidates um, from different countries in Africa, um, but also with Europeans, Americans, South American, Chinese students, and um, well, from all over the globe. So, and it's probably one of the strengths of the French academic and research system that it allows PhD candidates during the three years that they are doing, that they're preparing their, their PhD, that they can engage not only with their supervisors, but also with other PhD candidates from all over the world. And this is true for any discipline, any field of studies. Um, so I don't know if I am heading in the right direction. Um, so I don't think you were heading to the right direction. Uh, uh, I believe that's that's in, in the heart of uh, of uh, of uh, developing partnerships and to, to how to get PhD students uh, doing actual research and how they, they can get financed. So um, I don't know. You still have one or two minutes to finish if you if you have, but otherwise we can uh, see if there are some questions. If there are not, I will have one or two questions for you. So maybe one, one thing to just to finish. Uh, well, I, I know the Recife Facet uh, program and how, I know how it uh, links and brings together um, uh, young, uh, talented uh, African scientists. Um, and well, I see that as an opportunity for France and for those uh, scientists if they can engage more uh, with French universities and research centers. Um, they will have access, so as I said, to this network of international uh, young researchers that are now based in France, but also to the equipment that is needed to conduct the experiments. Because this is something that sometimes um, is might be lacking um, in some uh, universities in Africa. You can have very bright people. Uh, you can even have the funding to conduct the research, but not necessarily the equipment, especially in hard sciences, like uh, physics, uh, engineering sciences, uh, our biology to conduct all the all the um, experiment that you do need in order to uh, pursue your PhD. Thank you, Dr. Aguilar. Uh, are there any questions online or from uh, from the audience? Well, um, I have one for you, Dr. Aguilar. Uh, as we talk about best practices to establish partnerships between universities and, uh, and other partners, whatever they are, state representative or uh, private sector, um, knowing that you know the French system, how it works, and you are based in Africa, so you know both, uh, what should be the best one or two best practices that we can inspire ourselves from to, to implement within Africa? Um, for me, the, the partnership that works the best that I've seen are based on um, interpersonal relationship. So you need to put together scientists to actually uh, um, work together on similar fields and do understand each other's. They can be, well, at any level, they can be full professors, uh, senior lecturers, lecturers, PhD candidates. But the important thing is that they actually um, have the same um, scientific goal, the same scientific aim, and then they can put together their resources in order to achieve that, that aim or that goal. And um, when it happens, it's quite successful, I must say. Thank you. Uh, I believe we have two questions for you from... from... Someone can give him the mic, please. I'll give it. Um, so, I, um, I listened to your um, presentation, and um, what I want to understand is, is this. So, in France, you mentioned that um, PhD students become part of the 
sort of the faculty as at the time they enter the university, which is the case in, in some other universities as well um, in North America and, and elsewhere in Europe. But I also understand that this is made possible because there is um, sort of a base of endowments which is able to finance this, right? So I want to understand what the um, financial model is which enables this to happen and what your recommendations are around um, implementing something similar in Africa. Okay, so, um, well, the, and it's, it's quite, it's been in, uh, in place like for um, over a decade in, in France, but the, the PhD student, not necessarily in um, social sciences and humanities, where you can be just a student and not being part of the staff of the university, but in hard sciences, um, in order to be accepted as a PhD student, you need to get what we call a doctoral contract, which is actually um, you're employed by the university to do your PhD. So the, the student gets a salary, which is uh, um, around um, 1,400, 1,600 euros per, per month plus benefits for the duration uh, of their PhD. Um, and that allows them to actually focus on their studies and not to have to, um, to, 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 to try to find some time to, um, to pay for their bills at the end of the month and at the same time uh, do their research, which is very difficult to do, especially knowing that in France, we expect the PhD students to complete their PhD in three years. So it's possible to have a fourth year, but then it becomes quite difficult. So uh, the university, or it can also be a company, will be paying a salary to the PhD student. So if you want to implement this kind of model uh, in the African continent, it means that the state or the universities uh, do agree to put some means in order to provide um, uh, some salaries for the PhD students. Actually, I've seen that in, um, in Kenya where I'm posted, where what can be done is that uh, lecturers in universities who are not PhD orders uh, can see their teaching load reduced um, while they're doing their PhD. They don't have to pay the tuition fee that normally PhD students get. And actually they get a salary to do their PhD. So it's something that can be implemented uh, in Africa. Okay, we still have one last question for you. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, my question will be on the partnership. I know uh, uh, if you want to establish any partnership between university is institution uh, is okay, but uh, what is uh, your thinking about the partnership between university and industry and uh, in another side between university and uh, uh, farmer association and NGOs. There might not be the same way to have the partnership. Thank you. Yes, I, I don't understand. Actually, yes, you're right. It's much more difficult to create partnerships between the university and the private entity, uh, the industry, uh, or even an NGO and another, um, another university, especially because the two worlds don't know each other very much. Um, so one way to do that, and well, some French universities have been very successful in doing so. For example, the University of Paris-Saclay or the University of Côte d'Azur, who have a very long experience in working with the industry. So the idea is not just to reach out to the industry when you do need them, but to have them on board from the beginning. You can ask, um, um, well, CEOs of companies to be part of the board um, of the university. So they are there when you design the curricula. You are there when you design the research um, uh, programs. So, and they are able to speak up um, when you, uh, de uh, you define your own priorities and strategies. And then it will be, it will be much more easier than to, to have them as partners when you try to implement your programs. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Guerin. Merci beaucoup. Merci. I have noticed that uh, Professor Wang Yanfan maybe is connected. Yeah. You are connected. Welcome. Yeah, thank you. 
Uh, welcome. I, I will I will shall give a go back to the original uh, planning and uh, give a brief introduction of your bio. Then I will leave you the floor for five minutes if you if you allow me. So Professor Yanfan is uh, received her PhD degree in ecology and she is uh, currently uh, an executive vice president uh, University of Chinese Academy of Science. Uh, Professor Wong uh, focuses on mechanism of soils, carbon stability, and their global uh, changes. She investigates biogeochemical processes of soil carbon and nitrogen uh, turnovers and uh, in, in, in alpine and, uh, and um, ecosystems. So, uh, Professor, I, the floor is yours, and we, we're happy to have you with us. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I'm very sorry for being late due to some uh, technical uh, issue. Uh, I'm glad to join this uh, uh, section uh, to discuss the, the uh, cultivation of uh, uh, talents for the uh, future. So my uh, talk is about the fusion of research and education, which uh, towards a model of cultivating talents of the next generation. I'm from Chinese Academy of Sciences, a university um, uh, named the University of CAS, uh, which is part of uh, the, the, and the umbrella of CAS. Uh, and also uh, first, I would like to, to uh, share with you some uh, uh, technology headlines in the past uh, several years. Uh, first is about the chemist at the University of Liverpool have created a robot scientist that uh, performed 488 experiments over eight days. It can work 24 hours uh, besides uh, the, the uh, charging uh, time. This is 1,000 times faster than a human researcher. The robot has already discovered a new catalyst. Another uh, example or headline in uh, this uh, field is about AI company, DeepMindTech developed a software, Alpha Food 2, that uh, accurately predicts a protein's three-dimensional structure based on its uh, amino acid sequence. Researchers at DeepMind teamed up with mathematicians to tickle two separate problems one in the theory of North and the other in the study of symmetries. The news suggests that uh, AI has unlocked previously unimaginable technology applications and capabilities. And it is said to transform entire industries on a scale, not since, since the in industrial re revolution. Apart from revolutions in technology, our world today is living through accelerating changes. Globalization, for example, has brought both huge impetus for economic growth, while at the same time, wars, pollution, and especially the continued spread of COVID-19, which influenced everyone, each of the, the, the the, the the people uh for the for the daily even the daily life not only uh, some other activities mm -hmm. so the history uh has proved that uh, university growth is closely related to scientific progress and also education is changing the world uh not only the the the, the living uh, daily life of human being but also the whole progress of the Human society, and uh, I think uh, it's it's a very uh, tragic and very um, especially period for us. The one of the species in uh, living uh, on the earth uh, need some change, so education is one of the choice. So I, I also would, would like to move on um, the challenge. For the for us, the uh, also the 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 chance uh, we faced. So uh, I would like to introduce the practices done at the University of Chinese Academy of Sciences. This university, as I in introduced, uh, 
um, the first is and the umbrella of Chinese chemical sciences, which uh, is the, the class Chinese Academy of Sciences is comprised of a comprehensive research and a development network, a merit-based academic society, and a system of higher education. We have uh, several uh, universities and this umbrella is uh, uh, this university. Uh, the, one of the missions of CAS is training young science and technology talents for the future. So this university is quite young compared with other universities. In, it was uh, founded in 1978, which at that time called Graduate School of the University of Science and Technology of China. Also, it is the first graduate school in the history of the People's Republic of China. It was uh, uh, going to uh, or try to uh, find out the, the talents to uh, trace, to find out a uh, uh, route to uh, uh, cultivate the talents during the research uh, activities. So in 1914, uh, of Chinese academy cohort of undergraduate students. So up in, uh, around uh, 59,000 59, master and a PhD, uh, master student and a PhD candidates and uh, 1,600 uh, undergraduate students. So in, uh, and also in the past 44 years, UCAS has graduated more than 190,000 students. Most of them are uh, PhD and the master's students. All alumni include 161 CAS and uh, Chinese Academy of Engineering members and 27 of the country's distinguished young scientists uh, from this university. So UCAS has a unique college system featuring fusion of research and education. That means it's a kind of solution how to cultivate talents during the research activity. And uh, also every uh, college in this university is hosted by one of the CAS institutes uh, because they have uh, outstanding research capabilities and supported by uh, the uh, very, uh, the outstanding uh, experts and also yeah. the frontiers uh, in research. Uh, for example, the, the College of Physics in the, uh, in, Oh, I, I didn't show you the, the slide, but uh, I uh, uh, see it's a kind of uh, 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 test uh, how to organize the research um, uh, resources to uh, support education. So uh, with a unique system, uh, UCAS is able to provide high quality education. We have top-notch scientists participating in teaching from the very beginning, and the international renowned scientists such as T. D. Li and uh, Hua, Hua Luogeng used to teach at UCAS. Today, we have a total number of uh, more than 3,000 course in instructors, including 170 CAS members, and the number, number of thesis supervisors, which is 12,000. Uh, 800 with over 7,500 PhD supervisors. So our students are able to carry out research practices on internationally advanced scientific platform, such as the Beijing Electron Positron uh, Collider and the fast 500 meter uh, aperture cervical uh, 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 radio telescope and so on. So in the past four years, UCAS graduate students published uh, 55,000 SI articles and 14,000 EI articles as first or core first authors. And also other uh, active research activities are, are involved in the national level uh, research. And uh, we have uh, 
employment rate of over 95% and 80% of the PhD graduate is pursued uh, at IMDD as their careers. So the, the, uh, the pr priority, the, um, the future of research and education also provides sufficient quality resources for the undergraduate student program. Every uh, undergraduate student since entering the university is de designated with one senior scientist as the academic tutor. In the first and the second year, students take common core courses. In the third year, students choose major according to their own interests. In the fourth year, they encourage uh, in real research at UCAS labs and study abroad at overseas prestigious partner universities. During summer vacations, undergraduate students leverage CAS advanced research platforms and carry out research practices. This is a kind of, uh, we, we call that, uh, uh, it's a, a kind of solution, not uh, uh, you can have different kind of choices. You may have different uh, uh, opportunity to choose uh, the, the research fields. And uh, also, uh, I think that the, the achievements uh, based on this uh, uh, mechanism of this uh, solution, uh, the students, they kind of uh, have a very uh, good performance in, in their uh, later on uh, activity in research and uh, also the, the, uh, the career. So, uh, Professor. Professor. yeah, I will finish in uh, a few words. Thank you. Um, so UCAS will realize in, in deep uh, integration and uh, joint development uh, with the Guayu National Science Center, strive ahead in building a world-class university and make indispensable contributions to the uh, cultivation of innovation talents in China and to the progress of science and technology of mankind. Thank you. Thank you, Professor, for, uh, for this talk, interesting talk about uh, the UCAS model and uh... I don't know if we have uh, any question, Prof Professor Wang, from uh, the audience. Count to three, one, two, three. No questions. Obviously, we have a lot to learn from the Chinese model. Uh, uh, if you can just, in, in, in 15 seconds or half a minute, tell us, what are the main takeaway uh, on the UCAS model to develop partnerships? Uh, you know, we had a very um, uh, uh, broad uh, a partnership with the university uh, in the, in the uh, world, and uh, we try to link the, the different uh, 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 partners uh, at, at uh, uh, different levels. We, we try to use the project and the platform, uh, also the... the uh, uh, one-to-one -one, uh, group, the, 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 the scientist uh, uh, group, and also based on the, uh, the, the uh, uh, scholarship and also the uh, platform for research to, to uh, uh, try to, to uh, have the connect with the other, other universities. So different level with the, the government uh, uh, scholarship, the uh, university scholarship and a donation from the alumni and also the specific field. So uh, we have also uh, um, 100, more than 100 partners from the, the, the other countries. And also uh, the last number, the, the, the largest number of uh, uh, PhD uh, uh, candidates in, in China. Uh, we have more than, each year we have more than 500 international students from uh, uh, one, more than 100 uh, countries to join. Thank uh, the, yeah. Thank you, Professor, for, for this uh, um, little ap applause yeah. for the Professor Wang, please. Thank you, Thank you Professor. So uh, we we'll, we'll remain in Asia and move from China to Japan while we are in Africa. And uh, Mr. Daisuku Mizugushi. Is that uh, whatever you want? You can stay. Well, you can go to. You can go there. 
Mr. Mizuguchi is a director uh, at Nairobi Research Station uh, for the Japan Society for the Promotion of Science. Oui, c'est français, c'est possible, quoi. So, voilà, donc, euh, je vous remercie quand même. Ou bien, ou bien, uh, shukran. <laughs> je vais commencer par shukran, arigato, asante sana. Ok, ni. So, je vous remercie de me donner uh, cette opportunité uh, de présenter uh, uh, la présentation que je suis uh, le programme uh, de GSPS, que uh, c'est le programme uh, international, uh, en collaboration avec JSPS comme que je suis. So, J'aimerais ai, commencer par vous faire une petite présentation de JSPS. J'aimerais vous présenter nos, nos programmes internationaux accès sur les possibilités de financement scientifique et de bourse postdoctorale et doctorale pour la collaboration en matière de recherche. Nous souhaitons développer une recherche scientifique sincère en Afrique et au Japon. Il vaut mieux utiliser l'anglais, je pense. C'est mieux, voilà. Excusez. So, thank you for giving me uh, this opportunity to introduce uh, JSPS uh, program. Uh, I'd like to uh, begin by giving you a uh, brief presentation uh, about uh, JSPS uh, program. Uh, so, I'd like to introduce uh, to you uh, our uh, international program uh, focusing on the grants and the fellowship opportunity uh, in level of uh, postdoctoral fellowship and doctoral fellowship uh, for research collaboration. We'd like to uh, develop uh, sincerely the scientific research in Africa and Japan. If you are interested uh, in uh, our uh, scientific research in Japan, please take advantage of uh, our funding system of JSPS. I'd like to express at first my deepest gratitude for all participants of scientists and academic researchers, especially for Dr. Sege Neto Kereu, Director Zuzana, she was there, I think. Uh, thank you so much. And Dr. Bera Sogwe, Dr. Bonfans Nyaga, Dr. Moses. Uh, especially uh, even more uh, Dr. Christine uh, as uh, Thank you so much. Today, uh, I'm extremely happy to inform you that our academic researchers of JSPS, uh, Dr. Manabe, Professor Manabe, uh, was awarded as the Nobel Prize winner last year, uh, 2021. Uh, congratulations. So, I'm uh, so extremely happy to inform you that the Nobel Prize scientific uh, JSPS, uh, Dr. Dr. Manabe a remporté la victoire, grande victoire, le sucre du prix Nobel en 2021. So, toutes mes félicitations. We'd like to be very happy uh, by the fact that our JSPS researchers are now awarded as Nobel Prize winners almost every year from last 20 years since 2002 to enhance African ownership and leadership. We'd like to highlight now best practice for collaborating with African researchers because JSPS will combine African ownership and leadership with global best practices and the Nobel Prize winning scientific knowledge based on the collaboration between the Japanese researchers and the African researchers. We as a scientist, JSPS, we are really excited and honored to be able to push the number of Japanese Nobel Prize winners to the second highest in the world, all over the world, over the past few years, thanks to the contribution of African researchers, African scientists. Because we Japanese scientists in collaboration with African researchers, now we need to publish scientific and academic articles in highly scientific journals, such as nature or science with a very strong impact factor because scientific articles with strong impact factors as nature and science are extremely important for us 
as scientists. So I'd like to give, give you also one ideal example today about uh, the joint research between the Japanese and African researchers. Especially uh, several years ago, our uh, scientists were supported by the JSPS, the Professor Satoshi Omura. He was awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine 2015 by discovering Ivermectin to save many African victims suffered from this oncocele disease, as you know, in collaboration with African researchers in African laboratories. Professor Omura and many other African researchers are collaborating closely with many researchers of African universities to carry out joint research to solve neglected tropical diseases as oncocele disease in Africa. Since 1986, so it's been 35, 36 years ago that so we, JSPS, we have already started to support financially the African Joint Research Project of Professor Omura at the financial budget for scientific research for many years in collaboration with the African researchers to publish the scientific articles which which, which will be the most, of, most of strong, most of robust uh, impact factor as nature. So finally, uh, in cooperation with the African researchers, uh, the Professor Omura discovered Ivermectin against Filaria, Oncocelcasis, and to save a significant number of victims who suffered from this sickness. So that's why uh, uh, we'd like to express, uh, we, we, we have no words to express uh, all my gratitude uh, for uh, African researchers. Of course, uh, the Professor Omura's uh, immense contribution uh, to fight against the Gonkosel Cassis and Filaria in collaboration uh, with African researchers to enhance uh, the capacity building also. So uh, this is the victory of uh, Professor Omuraka under the direction of uh, this academic joint research made it clear that basic research brought the innovation and this triumph of findings contributed to, uh, to planetary health in Africa. And concerning the capacity building, through this experience of Professor Omuraka until the glorious victory of Nobel Prize, Professor Omura gave great hope to young researchers in collaboration with young researchers of the African continent. So we are forced to foster young African researchers who would like to find new areas of research and to challenge the new findings through the creativity, collective creativity of a robust scientific system with the Japanese researchers, because without the African researchers, without the African laboratories, so we, we could not find out this kind of the medicine. So uh, through this collaboration between Japanese and African researchers, JSPS will combine African ownership and leadership with global best practice and the Nobel Prize winning scientific knowledge. Over the past half century, Joint research between Japanese and African researchers of JSPS has successfully promoted significant development of science and technology and innovation in Africa. So uh, we don't have a lot of time. You have time? One minute, okay. One minute, Max. Okay. We so are taking late for the other. Because even one slide, so I don't advance. <laughs> so that's fine. But, uh, okay. Yeah, okay. So, as a result, Japan Society for the Promotion of Science can support the curiosity based researchers and high level scholarship in all disciplines uh, natural sciences, social sciences, even humanities. Uh, for example, we have 778 universities in Japan, 
So you can find out the some laboratories of all areas so to collaborate with Japanese researchers because the JSPS can support financially the, 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 the joint research between the Afri African researchers and the Japanese researchers. So these universities in Japan include the, 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 the Every uh, chemistry, biology, engineering, pharmacy, even AI technology also. So uh, I'd like to finish to show this pie chart. For example, this, uh, this pie chart show the distribution by country in a number of researchers exchanged under the direction of JSPS international programs. Uh, before at the time of COVID-19, approximately uh, the 4,000 overseas researchers were invited to, to Japan and almost uh, 5,900 uh, Japanese researchers uh, were sent abroad uh, through our international programs uh, to intensify uh, the collaborative support uh, based on the JSPS. So, and also, uh, yes. So I'd like to go, uh, finish go, to talk about go, the bilateral program based on MOU. Just basically shall be able to go, carry out go, its bilateral program in the form of joint research project and joint seminars based on MOU go, arrange, uh, or but, uh, because go, so we have go, a lot of go, laboratories and go, universities go, uh, in African continent. So uh, that's fine. I'm, I'm very sorry because I I'd like to. Uh, finish. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. 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 for you. Thank 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 you have knowledge of uh, the G GSPS program from Japan. Uh, our four panelists is Professor Ros Rosana uh, Valeria de Souza. She is executive director of International Cooperation Group of Brazilian University. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure to be here and to have this opportunity to share some ideas and experience that we developed in Brazil. And we thank you for this opportunity. I'd like to thank especially for Dr. Moses for inviting us to be here. And the, thank you for our chair and the, my colleagues in this session. Thank you for everyone. So, um, I'm Hosanna. So the Silva, it's a very big name, and the, I am the executive director in International Cooperation Group of Brazil Universities. The, um, we call it GCUB, and the uh, GCUB is a nonprofit civil society association, and it was founded in uh, 2018 in Brazil, the F, the capital of Brazil, and the, now you have. 89 Brazilian universities and the three international universities. Our mission, our main mission is to promote the internationalization of our associate universities through programs, projects, and different actors related to international cooperation in the research, technology, teaching, innovation, and the cultural uh, sectors. Uh, here you can see in this map is very good view. You can um, realize the, the distribution of our universities in uh, uh, all five regions in Brazil. In Brazil, we have different kinds of universities and the, we have a federal university, state and municipal universities, community universities, and you have also the private uh, universities. And the, you can see in this map that it's uh, very important to work with an uh, association or a network of university, especially when you talk about Brazil, a very big country, because it means that you don't need to contact each one 
to develop some a project, for instance, if you contact the directly the GCUB, we can have the possibility to develop different kinds of programs and projects with different universities and all regions from Brazil. We uh, develop our activities um, with different uh, partners and supporters like universities network, international organizations like UNESCO, OAS, OPAS, technological institutes, governmental bodies, rectors, council, cultural centers, associations. So I will move it quickly here because we don't have enough time, but just to show you the different partners that you have uh, worldwide uh, here in North America, Central America and Caribbean, South America, you have a strong partnership in, this, in very in a good programs with South America, Europe, different countries of Europe, also Europe, Africa, Algeria, Kenya, Morocco, Mozambique, Asia, so a strong cooperation with Asia in different countries. And with these partners, we develop different programs and projects that involve thousands of students, professors, and researchers each year. As you know, the universities in Brazil are so big, and the, the biggest and the best universities in Brazil are in this association, are in CSUB. So the traditional, the biggest, the stronger universities in Brazil are in GCUB. Um, here you can see some example of the program that we have. I, um, I will show you some special programs. For instance, this one, look with Mexico, it's an undergraduate mobility program involving more than 1,000 students. And also undergraduate program is Colombia, more, um, almost 1,700 students and 12 editions. And with Italy in, in involving the 43 universities. Also, you see, we did a small program in, involving the, uh, around the 20 students. It's a new program. Also, we have the, the largest program to train masters and doctors in the entire history of the American continent. It's called the scholarship, GCB scholarship program. It's a program developed with, in partnership with OAS, Organization of American States. And in this 11th edition, we offer for the students from the, more than 30 countries, more than 4,500 scholarships, full scholarship. The students say in Brazil to hold their master or PhD for two, three, or four uh, years. It's a big, very big program involving a lot of institutions. Here you can see um, from Brazil, they, uh, we have 71 participating universities and the students from these countries, from Latin America and the Caribbean, they are distributing in all these universities in Brazil. Here we can see the, the um, um, the list of the countries, the origin countries of the students, 30 countries, almost all countries from um, Latin America and Caribbean. And um, also, you, uh, we are very worried about the, pro the problem, mm -hmm. just a minute, please. As we know that he, in order to have a good university students, we needed to have qualified professors. And we also know that the master degree and the, especially the doctorate is fundamental for the qualification of good professors and researchers. But we know that both in Latin America countries and in many African countries, the number of PhD professors in the universities is still very low. For this reason, we have created two programs that you offer scholarship, full scholarship to teachers at the institution of higher education, ProAfri, 
for African countries and the Prolaque for Latin American country. So we start with Mozambique, but this program is we, we open next year for other African countries. Also, you have this one is PROLAC. It's a higher education professional training program for Latin America and the Caribbean. And it means that we also believe that it's very important to work together to share the good practices. And the, as we talk here about the SDG, we know that one of them, the last one, talk about the importance to work together to establish the strong and the sustainable a partnership. And the, for this reason, we try to work with the other networks, rectors, councils. And for instance, in this program, we have the very important networks from Latin America and the Caribbean, as Uduawa, Spon, and Muyes, one from uh, Mexico, another one from Colombia, another one, Suca for Central America. And the, uh, it's launched in 2022-21, and we have also three editions. And we have also the experience to receive the, the um, uh, governmental that ask us to prepare their students in Brazil, for instance, in Mexico, and ask us to receive the students to um, receive their master and doctorate in Brazil in the area of tropical livestock and agriculture called the Propati. And the, now we have a pleasure to, um, to develop an important program with PASET. And the, I will show you some in, initial information. Uh, our universities, um, we will receive the students from PASET to stay there for a, a, a doc, um, PhD sandwich, as you call in Brazil. And they will stay, stay in different universities. In the first pre-selection students, we have six, seven students from 19 countries who were pre-selected to carry out a sandwich doctorate at GCUB universities in Brazil. You can see here the, the students the, in the countries. Look in this map, these students, um, we distribute in all regions in Brazil, in different um, universities. So it's very important for us not to concentrate the students in one region or in one, just one university or two universities. It means that also for us, it's very important to have the possibility to receive different students from different cultures, from different countries in different regions of Brazil. Because as you know, Brazil also is like a continent and the each region, it's very different. So it's important also for us and for the students. And also, I think for uh, this conference, it's very important to uh, talk a little bit about the international thematic seminars. It's a very important uh, action that we have um, um, that we develop for a specific uh, target. It from the specialists, very, very uh, high and experts in some areas. For instance, we have this one in nanotechnology, in nanoscience. And the, here you have ecology, evolution, and conservation of diversity and interest in the ecosystems and the neotropics. In the different one you have. Here I, oh, I only selected someone to show you in the, with different universities, Rush University from Brussels, Istanbul universities, and the, Lebanon University, the, we have a lot. Uh, also, you have our general assemblies and I invite you to participate in this uh, event because in this moment, we don't have only the opportunity to know the rectors and researchers from Brazil, but also from 28, uh, between 28 and 45 uh, representatives for different countries. This year you have in Mexico City, in Una, and the, we usually we, we, we invite the, our partners invite us to receive the General Assembly in the International Seminary. So 
here you can see some example in Italy, in Manchester, in Budapest, in the here. Next one will be in Mexico City. So it's an overview regarding the um, um, project that we have. We, I am disposed to discuss with you. Thank you very much Thank for you. your attention. Merci, obrigada, shukran. Thank you so much, Professor. We are running out of time. The example of uh, mobility of professors as students and PhD students is, uh, I believe, is, is, is a great example to, to can inspire ourselves from. Um, last speaker is my friend, Anis Burqadi. You have a lot of pressure of time. He is the he is a spearhead in the research and development within OCT Africa. Please, Anis. Thank you, thank you, Hassan. And uh, I received a strong warning from Hassan that time is an issue, so I will do my best. <laughs> Honorable Minister, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, I would like to thank the organization committee of this conference for the excellent uh, organization, and also for inviting me uh, on this panel. Uh, there are some slides that I would like to share with you and in order to give you an overview about uh, OCP Africa and the way how we are approaching R&D uh, in Africa. So first of all, OCP Africa is subsidiary of the OCP Group. OCP Group is working since more than 100 years on uh, providing sustainable solution for soil health worldwide and especially in Africa since the creation of OCP Africa in 2016. And our target is to work on sustainable transformation of food system in Africa. And we'll see why it's so important to work on a sustainable transformation of food system. Okay, thank you. Uh, just in line uh, uh, with, with the theme of, uh, of the conference and about sustainable development goals, uh, just to give you some example about situation in Africa, and uh, going uh, in a quick way, if we take, for example, the, the zero hunger, uh, hunger uh, targets, up to today's situation, 20% of African population is under marriage. Uh, gender equity, and I was happy yesterday to learn about gender equity in the PASIT uh, uh, program, uh, and uh, congratulations for the, 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 the governance of the program about uh, how they could achieve gender equity in their program, but I believe in Africa, there is still much to do about that. Uh, take another example about uh, consumption and production. Till now, uh, uh, 35 billion US dollars are food imports in Africa, and this year it will be higher. So those figures are not from this year, but due to the logistic issues, due also uh, to the what is happening in Europe uh, between Russia and Ukraine, the 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 the, the imports of food in Africa uh, is just increasing, which is causing not only food security and sovereignty issues, but also a pressure on the economy and especially the hard currency in the in the country could lead also to some social uh, troubles and impacts. So this was just to give you an idea about uh, uh, the an example about situation in Africa. So anyway, let's address it like that. Situation is complicated. There are many issues, uh, at least, uh, and uh, as it, it was mentioned by Professor Susana, Brazil is almost a continent, and Africa is a big continent with lots of diversity in terms of challenges, in terms of, uh, let's say, education level, uh, governance model. Uh, uh, talking about agriculture, let's uh, address it, the, the farming skills, uh, the organization of the food systems, etc. So there is a diversity. This is why we need to have a clear approach and systematic approach to address that. I can quickly summarize it. So anyway, we need to simulate the imagination of multi-stakeholders. So we need to take time and to have time to sit together with scientists, with farmer organization, with NGOs, with, uh, let's say, uh, governmental bodies, with research institutes, universities, and try and take our time to, 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 to imagine the solution, to work on innovation, because our role is uh, to innovate. And I would agree with the, uh, my professor, Rashid Kelly, but also that the innovation should be uh, affordable and should be adopted by the final, uh, let's say, uh, uh, 
targets of the innovation, which is fundamental in our case, uh, case but could be also uh, uh, somebody else. Uh, anyway, we need to do it in a structural way and to create a common languages. One thing, and this was mentioned this morning, uh, we know that uh, uh, there is a, a kind of specific challenges and specific needs for specific situation in Africa, which means two things. Uh, for me, it's good to work on innovative solutions adapted to specific situations, but also we don't forget uh, that uh, also maybe the same situation was faced in other countries, either in Africa or either in Asia or other continents. So we need to balance that. We need, as I said, to copy with pride. If already something was developed, was innovated uh, somewhere else, we just copy with pride and, of course, work on, let's say, a clever and uh, realistic application in the African context. And if not, we can still go through this process. And this is the, the, the why we see here the hammer and the nail. So don't forget that we have the hammer and use it with pride. It's not an issue. But also don't think that the hammer is a solution uh, for all needs or all kinds of needs. There are specific needs uh, in specific situations. Um, quickly, uh, how we can do that? First of all, you need to be present. You need to be present in the field. You need to be present close to the farmer. You need to be present close to research institutes, universities, and you need to have direct and permanent discussion with them. How you can do that? In our case, we have 12 African subsidiaries, uh, in addition to the headquarters. Uh, seven nationalities are working for OCP Africa and more than 200 collaborators in total. Doesn't mean that we are working only in the countries where we are present, but also we are working in the neighboring uh, countries. And we see that in the coming slides. Here, just one message, and please focus on the enabler here. Uh, because this is the, the, the theme of our uh, conference. So anyway, the pillars are changing. And in the last two years, we changed them three times. And I'm sure next year, if we meet to, together again, we'll see other pillars. But uh, very important for us is to leverage on partnership for scaling and delivery. And we need to have uh, first an agile uh, partnership, because as it was mentioned in the first day, now, uh, uh, issues are coming in a quick way, and also we need to find the adapted solution also in quick way. So we need to have an agile, sustainable, and effective, let's say, technical and scientific uh, network. Uh, example of our partnership and what we are already doing. So for the time being, as you can see here, we have many run, sorry. So, we have many running projects around Sub-Saharan Africa. Of course, we leverage on the scientific excellence of UMCSP, but also in the infrastructure, in terms of laboratories, in terms of data center, etc. And also, we are partners. We are having partnership with international universities and research institutes. Here, just some examples of international universities and research institutes. But at the same way, and this is the most important, a strong partnership with African organization. As you can see here, there are research institutes governmental bodies, uh, formal organization, universities for sure, NGOs, et cetera. So we need to have this multi-stakeholder approach. And just to give you some figures, since the creation of OCP Africa in 2016, so more than 20 R&D projects were developed for implementation in 16 countries in Sub-Saharan Africa, until uh, now for those projects, 50 master PhD and postdoc students were involved there. So we are already having this approach of combining integration between research and, and, uh, uh, and education. Last slide, and I can see my friend Hassan becoming impatient. <laughs> uh, last slide, uh, 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 what we can do better and uh, how we can be more effective. Uh, to be honest, I, I start with food system and in agriculture sector, as it was mentioned before, uh, the widespread uh, uh, adoption of innovation 
should go through the transformation of the food system. So this is mandatory. And the, food, the transformation of the food system should be guided by technical and uh, uh, scientific uh, evidences uh, coming out from research projects. So this is why, again, I'm saying we need to work on multi-stakeholder process, a systematic R&D projects, integrating research and education in order to, to, to have, let's say, uh, uh, realistic impacts in order to have uh, adoption of quality research. So there is a question of quality, but also a question of adopting of the quality research. I will stop here. Uh, maybe if you have some question or maybe next session, if we can have more time, we can say more about what we are doing in Africa. But it was my pleasure to be here to, to give this talk. And thank you again. Thank you, Anis. Thank you, Anis. I have put a lot of time for sharing you. My bad. I, I know all the holdings are making you late for the lunch, but I, I, I promise you will not be late for the dinner. That's uh, <laughs> so. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I just give a floor for uh, two minutes for uh, Wunu Beek, uh, uh, coordinator is Global R&D Strategy Team of CARE, just to give uh, uh, a wrap up and final remark of, uh, of this, uh, of this uh, session. Uh, yeah, if you have a question, hello. sorry, before that, CARE, Wunu, uh, give yeah. me a second yeah. for excellence. So, uh, Wunho, you can go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, my name is Unho Baek. I'm from Korea. Uh, I'm working in KIR, Korea Institute of Energy Research, which is not the university arm, but just a government research institute. And I remember that uh, the moderator, Dr. Hassan, uh, implied that uh, through there are three partnerships. One is private, the other is state, and the, other, the last is the uh, R&D Institute. So we are uh, R&D Institute in uh, taking part of the IPI role in the RSIF program. And I want to uh, emphasize how to uh, make, uh, make it large, expand uh, the partnership with Korean uh, International uh, Partnership Institute. So, um, so there was some question from the floor uh, in online from the online participants, and it was saying that there was a recommendation uh, the partnership not has to be limited to the universities, and I'm agreeing with that. And I wanna make a kind of uh, there is there are many probabilities uh, working together with national research institute in Korea or China or Japan, any other country in France like or Brazil and. And then um, the second question was like, uh, is there any financial support to, for their research? And I want to say like, uh, yes, the RSIF program provides uh, financial support and my institute, uh, uh, KIA also support another uh, research fund to student and stipend and salary. The first presenter, uh, um, Mr. Matthew from uh, the France said, I, I, I remember that uh, he implied that mm, there are some salary uh, to the students and we do what France do. Okay, so um, yeah. And let me just share a screen for one minute. I know you are very hungry now. So let me have only one minute to introduce uh, the Korean uh, system. This is uh, this material is published online, so I will let you know uh, in the chat room to download the, the links. Uh, this is kind of a guide for the foreign students coming to Korea uh, for the 25 uh, government research institute. This is a table of contents. You can see many things uh, here, how to get the visa or researches in GRI. GRI stands for uh, Government Research Institute. Uh, KIER, my institute is one of them, one of the 25 GRIs. Okay, let me skip this one. You can uh, take advantage of this later on. I'm gonna have a time for the NST and GRI uh, glance. So NST is uh, like a uh, CAS. The Professor Wong Institute uh, introduced before. Uh, it's like a National Research Council of Science and Technology. It has 25 GRIs, research institutes. 
uh, we are one of them. Um, actually, you know, uh, you cannot see it well. Uh, there are three research institutes in Korea participating to RSI program. The first one is KIS, KIST, and the second one is KIR, and the other one is CRIC. These three are uh, actively participating to the program, receiving our uh, scholars from Africa. And uh, you, you know, uh, these are the example of a short uh, description of the, each institute. The first one, KIS, GC, and yeah. Uh, let me skip this one. Uh, my institute is here, Energy Research Institute. Yeah, and then okay, here are some fac facts and figures. Uh, there are foreign researchers in each GRI. The KIST has 20, 251 uh, researchers from abroad, and KIR we have fifty two, CRICT has sixty. Like this. And the headquarters of each GRI institutes are uh, like the in, one or two is in Seoul and my institute. The majority of the GRIs are located in Daejeon, the heart of the Korean Peninsula. Yes, these are the regional organizations of each uh, the institutes. Yeah, so uh, let me stop here and if uh, yeah, thank you to have uh, having me for kind of comments today. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, that was a real uh, wrap up and, uh, and summary of what has been said. Uh, I, I, I would love uh, to thank all the panelists and audience and those in the internet. I just want to add one uh, for 15 seconds. Um, that, uh, I mean, uh, one of the best practices that we use within UM6P to develop our partnership is uh, to tackle real life problems. That means we we go to, to seek financing from private sector and we ask them what are their concerns to improve their businesses and we translate those questions to scientific questions so i believe that's one of the things that uh, can help universities uh, find funding their own research from the private sector we cannot always count uh, to find uh, African, uh, to find solution for African problems, we cannot always uh, count on, on international aid or, uh, or uh, governments to finance. They don't have all the means. So uh, I will finish on that and leave the floor to Her Excellency, the Minister of Education, to say a few comments and words. So the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Um... I just want to, to thank the presenters, the panelists. They showed us uh, the opportunities that are out there for doing research, good research. But also we have uh, PhD students and um, probably the representatives of uh, academic institutions. I want to touch on something that was not uh, discussed here, is the, um, the, the policymakers, because um, the governments must create a conducive environment for partners to, to meet and have that, uh, that link. Because partnership here uh, can be between academic institutions and the uh, private sector, but also academic institutions uh, between them, different academic institutions. But if there is no conducive environment, there are not policies in different countries that facilitate that partnership it might be difficult for different uh, researchers to have a room to connect with um, their fellow researchers from different institutions, but also to link them with the private sector because research is, uh, is expensive, but also on the side of academic institution, we have to raise the bar in terms of academic excellency. Because if the, the findings are not relevant to the real life that are out there from what you've just presented, it will be difficult to attract private sector to fund the research. So everyone has to pray a lot because when you talk about partnership, so everyone has to gain in that partnership. So academic institutions have to market themselves by raising the bar when it comes to the quality of research and education. 
and private sector we finance those uh, researchers if they know they will, they will get results that will be facilitate them to increase their their businesses so that is what i wanted to touch on before you conclude this session otherwise thank you for your good presentations we've learned a lot and i think those who are doing research could see where there are opportunities so that they can tap in for the next futures. And for African countries, you know that uh, when it comes to research, we are still far behind. So it is good to partner with very strong institutions outside uh, the continent, but with in mind of having in mind that spirit of coming and raising the quality of life of our people. So that is what I wanted to add on and thank you so much again for giving me this floor. Thank you, Your Excellency, thank you. Thank you everyone, thank you the panelists and uh, sorry for taking more time, but a lot of things were interesting to be shared. Uh, that's uh, complete our morning session. Lunch is open. You won't be late for the dinner. You wanna add something? And uh, just because I forgot to, to say the I think important thing in the end of my presentation, the, I believe that if, why you do it, why we, everyone here, here to discuss the internationalization, the partnership, the science, technology, and the um, innovation. Uh, as we know, the, the, the motto of UNESCO says that uh, since wars begin in the minds of men and women, it is the mind of men and women that the defenses of peace must be constructed. But I would like to say that since the social inequalities were produced by the thoughts and the actions of men and women, it is in the hands, thoughts and the actions of men and women to build a fair world without inequalities of any kind, uh, ensuring everyone's access to education in the domain of science and technological, technological innovation processes are very important keys to change our continents, our continents, and to guarantee quality of life for our peoples. That is surely our responsibilities and the educational, uh, as educational leaders. Thank you very much, and sorry. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Le, le buffet est ouvert. Lunch is open. Thank you. Uh, bon appétit. Au revoir.